Yeah. And this thing is interest. No? No? Hello. Now it's uh, oh, very good. Uh, very good. So uh, this thing is uh, interesting because the organizer of this conference asked me, can you record like uh, no, a, a, short, a short video about you know, your talk last year? And I say short video is a short on YouTube. So I recorded the first shot uh, about the JDD conference, the very first one. But I think it's actually a good idea because it's only 60 seconds. And if there's only 60 seconds, I don't have to uh, care now about the content that much. So I can just hack whatever I like in 60 seconds and record it. And uh, what happened is now I recorded 380 Java shorts about different topics, streams or whatever. And everything started at the conference last year. So you can track down the very first shot. It's just my attempt to you know, promote my topping from, from, from last year. And uh, now I do it daily. And the cool story is I always find time because and now, now it's online, but sometimes, you know, the uh, meetings are not that exciting, right? So, and you can always create a short, and this is how you can, you know, be m more motivated during long meetings, right? So, for instance, um, so, uh, this is fun, also was not available, this is my new, uh, new domain, this is just fun. Someone thought that Airhex uh, is a company, and I'm working for Airhex company, so no, no, this is just, you know, uh, the, the histories, I, I, I had to push something to Maven Central, but you cannot have dash in the domain name. I, I had Air Adam dash bean, so I need something different. So I registered Airhex. So this is the history of Airhex. And now he asked me, "Are you working for the for the big company?" I say uh, no, uh, but I immediately uh, registered Airhex Industries. Now I'm working for large industry, right? Airhex. And if you go there, there's just links to GitHub, Twitter, YouTube Shorts, whatever. It's just an empty page with li links collection. You can ask me here whatever you like. The organizer wanted that I show you more code because my other topics require some slides, unfortunately. So I like Java. So uh, I do 100% Java on the back end, uh, nothing else. And in the front end, I do ES6 with JS doc without uh, TypeScript. And, and more and more companies are doing this, so it seems to work. Uh, this is the podcast. And the next episode, uh, I, re I would say in three weeks, it gets released. Then you should listen to it. I hope we get, you know, we nail down Kotlin versus Java. Um, so, AHXTV, any question left? First Monday of the month, and they are the shorts. So, it is not true 360, actually 380 already. Uh, so, uh, there's one year of shorts because the first short was about this conference. So, if you like, um, this is oh, actually uh, sh uh, a community formed around that. So, I get questioned, and uh, for instance, uh, someone would really wanted to know how HTTP client is working. And I say, okay, here's the short. And it's like, why you need to know it? Uh, for your works? Like, no, for Minecraft, for instance, right? So, it was. Interesting. So this is the shorts, 380, so I was lying, not 360. I did it in the taxi today. This is the newest screenshot, and um, yeah. And uh, Discord channel, and oh, AWS workshops, if you're interested in December, are around the corner. Enough talking, and um, now do the shorts. Maybe, this is important, uh, last year I promised you that I will port an old JTE application to Lambda. But you asked me so many questions that I didn't manage that. So I promised to record a screencast afterwards, and I did this. So if you like, you can rewatch my promise from last year. And this is just the links, so you can take a look on this. And this was 10 years after, from Java E6 to Quarkus and AWS Lambda. It's on my YouTube channel, so you can just like, you know, afterglow the session. OK. Now, what I'm doing, I'm doing this. So it is like, you know, Java, nothing. What I created just for the for, for conference talk, a uh, alias. This is the first hack, because uh, as you can see, this uh, short is Java dollar one, and this is the first hack. If you if you do something from command line with Java, because uh, on Mac at least, if you do Java, you don't get code completion because it's excluded, and this is really painful to make it work. So you have to because you know the entire code completion is like frozen on Mac because of security. So this is not that easy. So but if you create a short. That now I have the code completion. This is the first hack. So short number one, and I can run it. So, so what I'm using here behind the scenes is just you know, Java with the first parameter. Okay. So what you can do is actually this is boring main, but um, as you can see, this boring main um, can be actually make a little bit more convenient. So I can use an interface, and doesn't have to be public. And uh, it doesn't have to be public here as well. And it could look like this. And this should work perfectly fine as well. And this is working. 
So the cool story is you can have main methods on enums if you like. So the all you know, this works for years. Nothing Java 21. Not do you think you know we don't have to use Kotlin anymore because we have this, right? So but uh, so um so usually no one cares, but I care a bit because I've write a lot of you know CLI tools for myself. For instance, in my entire podcast publishing pipeline is in with Java 11 now 17. Okay, executable. So now it looks reasonable. Now uh, what's interesting here is what actually happens is I show you this. I do. Um, I will have to copy this once, once again. Yeah. And um, if I uh, can run Java like this, so it means all my shorts are never compiled or indirectly compiled. You can execute, uh, but this works forever. There's nothing new. But I, I showed this, and everyone was surprised. So okay, then I show it once again, right? This is like uh, Java Basics second hour, right? So, and by the way. What's cool is I worked all the time with application servers, so I didn't wrote, you know, um, written uh, a main function for years. So now I starting with it's pretty cool, you know, to start with the basics because usually my main function is like you know 2,000 miles, you know, below my code on on Quarkus, right? So um, so you can run with Java, so just Java, and it will execute the main method, which is pretty cool for sh short scripts. Okay, and next one, what um. Here happens, okay, so we did the um, main interface, so we can sk skip that. And uh, var arcs, of course. So uh, you can have, um, uh, this is old, sc old school actually, so you can replace a string arrays with var arcs, but there can be only one. So I mean, this is nothing, nothing special. So if you have var arcs here, it looks like that. So you can call it with like this, like this, or with a string. So if you're building, you know, when, when it's interesting, if you have builders, for instance, so uh, var arcs are nicer than, than string arrays, for instance. So I don't like to execute it because it's boring. So timer. People were actually surprised that it's working, but this is one of the oldest uh, Java, I think JDK 1.3 or something, introduced timers. Uh, it, doesn't ev uh, it doesn't even uh, say what it is. I used it uh, years ago. What it does is this task is executed every second. So if I run the short, uh, this is S04, and uh, it is executed every second. So built built in timer. This is an old school timer. We get an ex a, a scheduler also comes with executor service, but this is the oldest one. It is at least JDK 1.3 or older, because I remember in a JDK 1.3 project, it was actually an embedded project. We used that for, I don't know what, cleaning or timeouts, con calculation, whatever. And this is the modern timer in Java. By the way, I forgot to mention, and all my shorts are on dependencies. I just, at the beginning, I used Java 17, and now I'm using Java 21, but it doesn't mean it, they are no Java 21 features. It just used tw Java 21 because the new, new LTS. So whatever I'm doing here is uh, Java version is uh, Java 21. And I'm using right now Coretto because most of my projects are uh, serverless projects, and what I learned is that Coretto is one of the most popular JDKs, which uh, Datadog, I think, did this uh, survey. So it was surprising. So I thought, you know, this is like, uh, yeah, I use also uh, Azul system a lot, uh, Zulu, for instance, but surprised me that it's uh, that, uh, uh, that popular. So what happens here is it's exactly the same code. So do the, uh, what is this, 0, 5. So if I run this, you see it works as before. It's a little bit nicer. And this is the executor's new scheduled thread pool. And uh, if you would like to know how it works, it's always a good hack is to click on it. And you see actually scheduled thread pool executor, what happens behind the scenes. And this is what I really appreciate about Java. And I didn't like about Scala, I have to admit. If you click out the Java library code, I couldn't understand it. Right? And in Java, the cool story is you can actually read Java doc. I just look at the source code and you see the Java doc and you can render in browser. Pretty cool, I would say. This is one of the reasons I really like Java and not that much other languages because you are very quickly in, in, in libraries with hard to understand code. Uh, I was told by, uh, by uh, Scala developers that I don't understand the code because I'm only an application developer, not the library developer. There was a distinction. And uh, the library developers are supposed to write the code and application developers are supposed to, to read the code without understanding it. So back then, at least, I, 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 I'd, I was like, okay, then I'm not interested in, in using uh, that code, right? <laughs> so um, a file watch. So uh, built-in file watch. You knew, who knew about that? There was a... Oh, a little bit disappointed. I thought no one. So okay. Um, so um, 
So it is uh, if you if you run it, um, it was six. So nothing happens. But if I create a file here, JDD text, you see it found that the new file was created. So what you can do with the file watch, what I did, there was an old project watchdog. I, I uh, au automatically deployed stuff to application servers on every change, right? So like code deployment, this is what I used. So it works out of the box, works great. Part of Java, you don't need uh, third third party libraries. So we were file watch. So uh, as you can see, everything is Java and IO and you know, ancient code. So you need the, the uh, watch service, get default new watch service, which path you are interested in and which event you are interested. Entry create, entry modification and so, and so stuff. The point actually of the talk, what we can all learn is uh, how much Java brings to the party without having any external depe uh, dependencies. And I really don't like external dependencies and now even less, you know, because every external dependency is, uh, you have to care about that, right? So it's like uh, you have to care about it and you, you are responsible for the f security patches or whatever. So if you no know, no dependencies, more vacations. This is this is actually my, my, my idea, right? So who knew that there is a file diff? Ha. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually curious whether I will find something who no one uh, knows about. So what it says is file diff. So there are two files, the A and B, they're identical, right? Identical means no difference. So if one file, if I change one file, if I rerun the code, you see one. It means at the first, at the first, how to call it, at the first slot there is a difference. It only ch uh, tells you wh whether there's a difference and where the difference is. But it's actually good enough also for as a watchdog. This was another thing. If you're watching configuration files, diffing or something, not bad, right? And um, and and um, files mismatch. It was introduced in Java 12, so also old. Not that you're, th not that you're thinking that I'm using already Java 22, right? And by the way, all the this is my shorts. What I'm doing here, everything is recorded. I just picked some of the more interesting one, and you can watch the remaining 300 if you like, right? Um, so, so what is this? Is uh, I don't even, uh, copy to oh th this one is cool. Um, what um, what it does is I, I I I'm always confused copying and reading, but it basically no basically it uh, copies from Java to my system clipboard, right? So if I go here and say it was uh, eight, right? Eight, run it. I don't know why, why this happened. Okay, but it is my clipboard. So what I did on GitHub, a small project, uh, how do I call it, clipboard washer, it copies to clipboard and reads from the clipboard and I can remove all the, you know, all the styling with Java. There's like three lines of code without any external uh, libraries. So um, if I do clip clipboard washer, this is my small library. So it removes, it removes the, uh, all the, uh, how to call it, um, yeah, all the styling, which is annoying, at least on Mac, you know, if you copy something from the, from Visual Studio Code on, or, or page and put to the notes, you get all the stylings and I would like just to have ASCII, right? So this is a little bit, it needs a swing behind the scenes. So you cannot uh, natively compile it with GraalVM, but you can do it with uh, Az um, not Azul system, the other one, uh, Bellsoft uh, claims to, to, to be able to do that. But still amazing what's possible. And this is like, this is also ancient uh, library and I know it uh, from, from Swing, Swing days. So, and this is the other way around. This is read from clipboard. So if you have both, you can read and write from cl uh, clipboard which is very cool for automations because I actually forgot what I often do. I, uh, yeah, um, in my workshops, I say add link from clipboard and, and what happens is the links are automatically committed to for my attendees for stuff like that. It, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? So, um, oh, what I forgot, the, the, the first short or two interesting shorts. I'm using here Visual Studio Code and uh, the question is, you know, why Java is working? The cool story is we can choose in Visual Studio Code between Eclipse and NetBeans. So I'm using NetBeans right now, but I used um, two weeks ago Eclipse. Red Hat and Microsoft official extension is based on uh, Eclipse language LSP. And Oracle Java platform, which I use right now, right now with Java 21 support, is based on NetBeans. 
And I use NetBeans all these years, so now it's now the full circle. So I have NetBeans again, and what it looks like, and now I'm also a cool, cool young developer because I have Visual Studio Code, right? And and not bloated something else, right? So, um, but now the the real reason why I'm using Visual Studio Code is because I do a lot of JavaScript as well, and it's easier to switch back and forth. And every web developer uses Visual Studio Code. So, uh, oh, read password, uh, also cool, built in. This is more usable. So if we do this, I get here a nice, you know, mask password, and um, this is already built in. Mask, this is the entire code. Um, you knew that this is a console. It's a small little class system console, and it already is able, you know, to read passwords. I, I saw already in project, you know, adventurous stuff with system input listening or whatever. This is, okay, or we can pick, you know, console. May also ancient, Java JDK 1.6. So most of you were not even born, you know, at JDK 1.6. So this is really ancient stuff. If I show this stuff, I get the question, you know, always, um, hey, uh, you have Java 21. So I get what I show you is old stuff. We forgot about that, right? Questions? You cannot, oh, this one. So um, I have to be careful. So um, Java, I think, as I have to pick it. What I can do with that, this is a newer one. I think, uh, wait a sec. I have to do this first, then I do the JDAPs. This is just to simulate JDAPs, uh, I think, class. So what it shows me, my code uses the Java IO, Java Lang, Java Base, and so forth, right? And what you can do is I can just pick the modules and say with JLink, so I will just use this, and I also already did the JDDVM, you see? And with that, I created my own JVM, which is a subset of the JVM, and I can put this JVM, it is called JDDVM, of course, here. This is, um, I can just go there, JDD, bin, and run it. But it's a subset of the real one, and this can be useful if you're building your own Docker images or whatever, because, you know, in this JVM, there's no swing, for instance, right? So no, no one can attack you. So from security reasons, actually useful, not only cool. Okay, so why JDAPs? Because they show you all the modules. Okay. Uh, okay, this was 12. Exactly. So the next one, oh, emojis. So we can just print emojis. The people are also surprised. And uh, actually, uh, it looks nice. Uh, uh, this is 13. Short uh, 13. So it looks like this. Um, what we do right now, uh, like command line interface for demo purposes for uh, for uh, for uh, a REST client, and with emojis you can really make it look it nice, right? So this for the client, so and it just works out of the box. You just copy the uh, emoji to your to your log files and it's working, right? So this is primitive and what you could also do you could use the code points to generate emojis so you need uh, two numbers and you can do it so you can absolutely do this as well so uh, so this one is pretty cool so it is based on ANSI escape codes and what you can have you can have colors in the terminal so let's come to uh, 14 so if we run it you can have multiple colors which is pretty cool. I use this actually all the time because I immediately see in the logs where is the arrow, what is the warning, and um, yeah, and this is all brute force what I'm doing right now. But you, of course, right? You can you can you don't hide it like you can say no my logs, my uh, warnings on orange, and and errors or exceptions are red. So this is no magic. It's just uh, us, uh, this is terminal actually. It has nothing to do with Java, but it's very 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 simple. Okay. This one, built-in logger. I, I get questioned which logger are you using, and I'm using for a long time the system logger from Java Lang. It ships with Java. Um, it is, for instance, I've used Quarkus. This is uh, redirected to, to Quarkus logger, so there is actually no downside. You have no external dependencies. So if I run this, um, if I run this, you see info hello world and uh, the uh, new line is a little bit annoying but we can uh, configure it there is no new line oh no the new line is not annoying here because um i did the system on print line but um, um sometimes if you use this it generates a new line after um after the 
after the log statement, but it's configurable. But the system logger ships, I don't know, uh, it is actually, it is used since JDK 1.9 or 9, so it's also ancient. So in most, actually in all my serverless project, either we use system mode print line or system logger, no external dependencies. This is why I didn't care about log4j problems because I never used that actually, right? And um, yeah, questions? So and I had already a conversation with Oracle, and they t uh, they said, yeah, but the system logger was was not meant to be used that way. But so what is the downside? It actually ac actually nothing, right? So but uh, uh, they build it you know, for internal purposes, but it's official library, so you can just use it. And uh, why it ca or, or maybe um, if you're in the cloud, why you can use such a thing? And on premise is not that great idea because on the cloud everything the entire system out print line is redirected to an aggregator, CloudWatch or whatever you have. And then you can you, you can do the filtering aggregation outside. Okay, uh, auto closable. So it's just an interface. You can write your own auto closable. And uh, wait a sec. Where is my view? And if I if I run the code, so this is a 16. It will of course close it closing so um you can make your resources auto closable for instance microprofile rest client the microprofile rest client what you're injecting is if you if you do it auto closable it will close the resources for you for instance you have so and if you have your own resources if you if you you only have to implement the method close and say it's auto closable and then you can use it here in try with resources this is the trick right so it it is instantiated here and closed here Okay. So this is interesting. So I have here a static initializer S1 and S2. So um, if you run it, this is a less common. So it is executed S1, S2, and the method. So you saw this already? Okay, this is less common, but this was the GDBC trick. This is how GDBC is working. What the JDBC driver is doing, uh, the static in the static block, the JDBC driver, Postgres, Oracle, whatever, they register themselves, right? So they say uh, driver manager register and and pass themselves and register themselves in the driver manager. So this is actually useful if you would like to register your own extension or plugin somewhere. So you know that. You are James Gosling decorated somehow, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Short is 18. So what will happen? So shared code parameterless, shared code parameterless. It means you can, uh, this, this is invoked after every constructor. So what you can have, you can sh shared initialization code. So this is less common. I just wanted to show you that it's actually working. <laughs> this is, and uh, ju I just found it by accident. It's like it's actually interesting, right? Because it was static initializer. Ah, oh, you, I, if someone would like to trick you, you will find it in the certifications. You know this. I know what it was introduced. Uh, Java ships with built-in asserts and you can enable and disable the asserts so if I run this exactly so nothing will happen but um, uh, yeah I will have to use the Java minus EA so I get the exception so you could actually use this to check preconditions why I'm showing this because in one project the architect got the idea to use assert J, J unit uh, uh, testing, J, um, yeah, no J unit, unit testing library in production code to test the preconditions. And I say, okay, if you really would like to test the preconditions, maybe you should use assert. And this is what they did. But this is ancient and very uncommon. Who knew about that assert? Wow. So I'm at a Java conference, right? So next next time I, I will do more impact and uh, .NET days or something, right? So everyone will be amazed. Yeah. 
and and there was highly questionable as it was introduced to us in our millions of articles whether we should use or not and everyone forgot about that right right now this is useful what this does is um is uh, similar to the other one it resets the terminal i always search for that whether it's possible so if you have this escape sequence it cleans the terminal which is really nice because you know if you after after uh, the first run i would like to have a, a clean terminal the next run i see where it, where it stops so this saves me a lot of time, of course, trivial. Um, compact, this is also cool. So um, this is a nice, nice touches. So if we do this, it gives back 10K. So what it did, it converted 10,000 to 10K, which is pretty cool, I would say, because it makes code readable. Okay? So this one is actually uh, how to call it there is no surprises you can just format you know the numbers differently but make this more readable so you can use underscores this was project amber so it was nothing specific but still i actually i forgot about that then i said okay it's actually cool and now do it all the time because it's easy to, easier to read you know if you have for instance uh, timeouts and application servers on, on, on you can make it nicer so um functional interface okay this is a functional interface and uh, i got questions you know in the uh, in the comments why we need the annotation here and um, because if you remove the annotation it's still working so who knows why we need the add functional interface uh, you are not allowed to answer because you are kind of a java guru so uh so uh <laughs> hmm? not optimization you know yeah exactly so there was a huge discussion, but the, forget about this. What functional interface just means is, so if I add you know, second, I get an error because the compiler will say a functional interface, there can be only one, right? And now there are two, so this is what, uh, what uh, happens exactly. So, but uh, if, you are, you know, um, if you know what you are doing, you don't have to use the functional interface. It's very similar to override. So the override is the similar concept as, as, as functional interface. But this caused a lot of, I don't know, explanations. People thought, you know, there is some magic here. SEM. No one calls this SEM anymore. Single abstract method. This is functional interface. And um, so what you can do is I can have here a system out print line. And this is, you know, on the fly, I'm creating runnable and running the runnable. Okay? So no magic SEMs. No one calls SEMs anymore, right? As I started, Java 8 Lambda's single abstract method was all over the place. And the term... I actually looked at the Oracle Java docs, and there is SEM, but now no one talks about that. So uh, what's that? Um, ah, so what happens here? I'm using um, optional of nullable, and say okay, if this this is instead of if else, you can use uh, optional, and I say of nullable name or else Duke. So what you can do, you can misuse actually optional. To, to have uh, preconditions, that's all. Highly questionable, because if else would be better, but this is shorter. Okay, so, and you can of course use asserts as well, but you know, you have to, yeah. and, and what you should do is objects require not null. So there is objects method, which is very similar to that, so this would be the, the better way to do this, right? Um, yeah. But the cool story is, this of nullable, what I can do here as well, and it's impossible with object requires not null, I can actually map. So this optional looks like a stream. So I can say, you know, make uppercase and filter whatever, and then if you are not available, then return the other way. So, and this is not doable with object requires not null. So this is why I'm showing you this right now. Very cool. So um, object preconditions, this is what I meant. This is the uh, typical case where you can say require not null. And what I did here, you can pass a method reference, which looks like that. And the method reference here, um, yeah, it is just called. So if I call the code here, I get an error, null pointer with 27. You see here, and this is the input, please now. And this is the, 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 um, the precondition here. Okay. So formatted and formatter. 
So uh, also, this is a recent short. I got lots of discussion when to use, you know, um, string format and when to use format head. And um, so the answer is actually obvious. The string format is a static method on, on of the string. And the format head is an instance method on a string. So you can use format head, for instance, in, in streams to, f uh, to for map. But it's harder to use string format because you need the two parameters. But both methods are identical. There's the same implementation, so there is no difference. And But the format is actually cool. So what I use, um, for instance, here, you can you can specify, you know, the variables and replace them here, Duke and uh, 18. So this is the string and this is the D. So if I run the 28, so you will see uh, Duke is uh, older than 18. So uh, it is working. What I sometimes see more and more, I see some uh, so something like that. So this appended on the end. And uh, if you do it for logging, you should be careful. I measure the performance. This is significantly slower than string concatenation, for instance. So if you use no, I wouldn't use the formatted for logging at the end. But if you if you need something in between, so it is worth. Okay. And this is what I searched a lot, is also not string template. It is actually available in Java 17. So what I can have, I can have positional parameters, and now I can reuse them. You see, this is hello, this is parameter 1, goodbye, parameter 1, and this is Duke, 1, 1. Are, are you developer? So this is really useful, because otherwise you have a long array, you know. You have to say where, I, where I'm here, and you have long array. And um, you can also use names for it. So um, now, short... 29 you see hello duke are you developer goodbye duke so duke was used for hello and for goodbye one pretty cool we use it for instance for json testing right so if you, uh, you have my system tests and i have a json input so i have multi-line string i can put the parameters and send it to to the server okay this one uh create temp directory and it's working very useful for unit tests or integration tests. Sometimes we create temp uh, directory, put the files, and after the test, you would like to have another test with another state. Create temp directory and create temp file. Very useful. So it will just create a temp directory with a random name. But uh, still useful, use all the time in unit tests or s integration tests or system tests in tests. <laughs> um, so um, also interesting. So this is very useful. You knew about that? This is like mkdir uh, minus p. Yeah, you're also a guru. So this is uh, somehow related, you know. <laughs> so um, what it does is it creates nested directories at once. Otherwise, you will have to create the first one, then the next one, the but this is create directories. is pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. It's a time saver, actually. And I also use it often. Um, so if you go here, uh, what version is it? doesn't even state but it's it's not java 21 it is at least java um, 17 or java 11 11 so this ancient 11 yeah this is also i don't use a lot apache co commons and uh, uh, lang and configuration i stick with java because it is as you can see there's a lots of stuff there and and my mode is you know go to java doc first what's there if you cannot find the answer, then search for libraries. How much ti time do we have? Not the, you, you know it? How much time? Eight? Eight? Oh. Um, okay. Uh, create directories. So I created a lot of directories with this approach. And um, what happened here is um, how to iterate over directories. Also very useful, directory stream. So you get directory stream back, and you can iterate over directories and do something with it. So sometimes you have to find classes for batch processing, whatever. So this is actually the way to go. Um, so, oh, character to uppercase. Why it's so interesting? Sometimes you have, to, um, for instance, naming conventions. Serverless cloud, I would like to have a consistent convention uh, camel case. And for instance, yeah, that's too, too long. I have to convert underscores for camel case to camel case, right? So with uh, character to uppercase, you can very easily say the first character is uppercase, for instance. Uh, yeah, cloud native. 
what cloud native means configuration is actually this so you're picking the <laughs> configuration from environment entries this is jdk 1.0 but uh, this is the cloud native configuration if you will um so um also cool there is a new method on string it's called oh new method somehow new lines so um there's for instance uh, a multi-line string and with lines i get a stream of lines back and do can do operations on it okay so what you can do for it for instance you can you know have the lines and send to jgpt and see what happens right so uh, for instance so this is pretty cool on string instance method line so and what you can see is there are like 380 shorts it's all java code and from my perspective it's very lean you know it fits one page and we can do a lot with it right this is without any external libraries which is which is pretty cool um this is also interesting this turns this makes a java code executable as a shell so you can use the java as an as an as an interpreter and run it as a shell script so this is dot shell this is number uh, i don't even know 36 so it runs now a shell script and we using so you can have java as shell script and what you have to do is you only have to say which java source it is okay copy file copy is file copy I uh, also heard you know copying files are, are is hard with Java. I, I, um, I don't know. So this is how it looks like. Um, then, um, okay, also cool. What I do if I build as um, in, in a CLI and have a string array, stream off converts the stream array, uh, sorry, the string array to a stream. So what I can do right now is I can do, for instance, filter dash dash, find is present. So I can parse my input parameters, simple one, without any external uh, dependencies, for instance, what I do all the time. So I don't use Pico CLI for my simple code because maybe I have no two or three uh, parameters, not 10 on all variations, and with stream is just good enough. Um, so yeah, endless streams. So what this does is it I could actually you know, keep so what this does is I generate a string with a new date and uh, it will keep doing this forever so you can have a stream you know which generates UIDs and connect the stream to something else and it will go forever so it's like endless stream with generate so the trick is here generate um, so um, oh also cool what this does is it redirects system out print line so if I run the code and someone will write system out print line you will see hello Duke in the log file so we did it, you know, back then on application servers. So system out print was allowed, and we redirected it somewhere. Uh, the problem with system out print is not, you know, that it writes to the system out print it, it The problem is the system out is synchronized, and uh, and which is not a big deal for serverless, but a bigger deal for Loom, right? Or virtual threads. Okay, there, there is a difference between um, the chrono units and time unit. The one is uh, from the concurrent. And the other one is from temporal, and this is uh, somehow you know mis uh, misleading. Um, this just, I think, because uh, we only have maybe five minutes now, and I have to show you some more interesting stuff. Um, this is maybe interesting. This is the entire code to decode JSON Web Token without external external dependencies. The other one was trivial, right? So the other one was more for .NET conferences, but this is maybe interesting. So this is my JSON Web Token. I split the token and uh, base64 uh, decode map string to new and uh, if i do this i will see what is it now uh, 43 short 43 so you see this is the decoded uh, json web token someone asked me you know why i'm doing this and not using json web token io page and the answer is because sometimes we had to search in a log files for it and it was uh, a way easier to to automate it this way so um okay, okay the um tenary operator you know it all um maybe okay this was uh, this i remember for my java certification 1997 whatever which of the v w what is what is correct everything so and i spend uh, 10 minutes 10 minutes meditating and everything is correct so um 
Uh, this is actually the you, you knew about frequency. So what I can find out, you know, how often something happens. So built in, it is. Uh, so three times means uh, uh, number two occurs three times in the collection. So I uh, need it uh, recently and frequency is built in. You can just use it. Okay, three minutes. So let's see. Uh, so list get last is very frequent, Java 21. So we waited for this 25 years, but we can finally do it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, yeah, there is an, a difference between uh, uh, value of and parse int. The one returns the int and the other one the integer, the object. And what I'm searching here, oh, this is the my clipboard washer. I'm writing to clipboard with um, string flavor. This is the trick. And reading from cl uh, clipboard, this is the entire code. And if you put it to a shell, you have a clipboard washer. So it will remove all the styling information. So on modifiable uh, lists, I did a code review and this was, they used a strange thing. So you can just say list copy off and it's unmodifiable. There's list copy off, map copy off, set copy off, lots of copy offs. And, um, okay, so you can write constants this way. So you don't have to use public final static. If you write int message, this is public static final. So interfaces can look like this. You knew about that? But in all my projects, I still see public final static. So I delete it and it comes again, so it is not final, it is final. You need a good one. So you, uh, this is a Java 21 topic. I have a developer with a runtime. Developer is nested record. And what I can do is, you see here, deconstruction or destructuring. It, uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying, if the instance is a developer instance, it, I'm automatically calling in background, you know, the get name. So I get the variable with the name, age, and weight, name, age, weight, and it is working. So this is very important for me because this kills, hopefully, all the mappers, DTOs, and all the stuff. You know, you don't have to invoke getters and setters again, hopefully. Um, okay, that's the same without think. And this is maybe the oldest functionality. But r pretty cool. So I have a class, Magical Bean Event Handler. And this class, Magical Bean Event Handler, uh, I would like to say, I would like to create a wrapper around Runnable. And um, Runnable class, and this is the instance, and the method is notify Duke. So if I invoke now run, what the event handler will do, it will invoke the notify. So it is like, you know, it is like uh, it was used for instance, for in Swing and AWT, but it's usable right now without Swing and AWT, you could register an action listener and I say, if this action listener fires, actually call another method, a business method. Th no. So if you do it, run was called, you see it called this because I configured it here, this reflection, of course, right? So, yeah. so um, yeah, uh, wh what happens here, I say um, runnable was called, and I told you when runnable is called, what happens when it sit since it creates dynamic proxy? Dynamic proxy is like AOP, built in AOP, and before run is called, it, it calls my method. So just wanted to show, and this is, uh, this is really old, so um, event handler create. Let's see whether I find it. Java 1.1 one one or something like this, 1.2 maybe. Um, it can be different threads, but usually we'll use in the same thread because of, I, I don't need, no, it, it is not documented. I think we are out of time, so I, I can go, you know, for 300 other shorts. But um, any, any questions maybe? Final, some reasonable questions or... <laughs>